Good evening, friends. Here we are with the third assignment of PLL 212, taught to us by Mr. Kushal Shah. The topic we have for today is very inquisitive, and it is about metamaterial clocking. This is Anurag Rawat, and I am Amitesh Pangti. So, metamaterial clocking is basically made of two words: metamaterial and clocking. Now, we all know what clocking is, but we don't have an idea what metamaterial is. So, what are metamaterials? Metal materials are made from assemblies of multiple elements fashioned from composite materials such as metals or plastics. The materials are usually arranged in repeating patterns at scales that are smaller than the wavelengths of the phenomena they influence. Well, the fundamental unit of a metal material is a double split ring resonator, abbreviated as SRR. It is an artificially produced structure common to metal materials. Their purpose is to produce the desired magnetic susceptibility. These media create the necessary strong magnetic coupling to an applied electromagnetic field not otherwise available in the con conventional materials. The above figure shows the direction of the electric field, while the one below shows the direction of the magnetic coupling. An effect such as negative permeability can thus be produced with a periodic array of split ring resonators. So, meta is a Greek word for beyond. So, what is so meta about these materials? That is, what is the thing that differentiates these materials from the materials that are found commonly in nature. So before we delve into the concept of meta and materials altogether, let us hit the basics and talk about refraction. Well, refraction is the bending of light when it passes from one transparent medium to another. This phenomenon of refraction is governed by the Snell's law. In the case of meta materials, the value of refractive index is negative. Hence, the light bends in the opposite direction as shown in the graph. Metamaterials derive their properties not from that of the base materials but from their newly designed structures. Their precise shape, geometry, size, orientation and arrangement gives them their smart properties capable of manipulating electromagnetic waves by blocking, absorbing, enhancing or bending waves to achieve benefits that go beyond what is possible with conventional materials. This unique property of metamaterials can be used in various fascinating applications, one of them, them being stealth. Right. So notice this GIF carefully. The object to obscure is covered by a metamaterial and the light scattered by the object undergoes destructive interference with the light suffering from the negative refractions from the metamaterial as shown from the diagram. Thus effectively, no light is reflected from the object and the light from the object behind diffracts and bends around the object to follow the same trajectory and this gives us a sense of a transparency. The first experiment conducted towards invisibility using metamaterials was a microwave experiment. Microwaves were incident on a metamaterial covered object and a sensor was placed on the opposite side. It was observed that the phase after interaction was the same but the intensity in the world dropped but not to zero, that is, a shadow wasn't observed. This was a pioneering step in achieving stealth. Contrary to the scientific reachability, there has been a lot of progress in the fictional world as shown in the movies, the Blackbird, in the X-Men character and the Harry Potter which we are all aware of. But the answer to this question that it is practically possible is an unfortunate no. This is a result of the following constraints of the killjoy that is practicality. It is because of the size. For visible light, the subject needs to be of the order of nanometers. That is, the size must not exceed a maximum of 20 nanometers for visible light. Distortions in the bent EM fields. The cloaking of 3D and moving objects is extremely te tedious, expensive and non-robust. The metamaterial must be built specific to the orientation and in constant correspondence with the motion of the object for cloaking to be possible. Well, then what are the scopes of it and why do we have to be uh, coherent with it? Though the present circumstances don't appear very pleasing, there is a whole gamut of streams in which the application of cloaking can be phenomenally fruitful, which include invisible antenna, surgery and defenses. It seems very fascinating that antennae can be used to leak out information from other sources without being visible themselves. Also, this would reduce the interference observed when a large number of antennae are present together in close vicinity. Also, the fact that in surgery, surgeons can make use of cloaking to carry out operations on the patients without being hindered by their own body parts. Furthermore, aeroplanes can use this technology to fly in sensitive regions without being detected. But it goes without saying that these applications can only become a reality after a huge spurt in technology and a concerted effort in this direction by the engineers of today. We hope that this video was informative enough for you to know things about metamaterial cloaking. Thank you.